Today we will be making our shoe dough buns, also known as cream puffs. Well, when we put the pastry and the cream together, they'll be cream puffs. So today you need to get your dough working. And this is an interesting dough. It'll be very similar to um, the way that we'll prepare our churro dough tomorrow as well. So you're gonna start with that same saucepan that you used yesterday. And in here I have my butter, my sugar, and my salt. And I'm also gonna add one cup of water, okay? And I'm gonna get that going at like, I don't know, maybe like a medium high heat because what we want that to eventually do is boil, all right? So when we're waiting for that to happen, a few tools that you wanna have handy, you wanna have a wooden spoon handy. We're gonna use that to combine and incorporate the flour. You also want a, a sifter or a sieve, same, similar to what we used um, yesterday, okay? And we're going to be sifting the flour into this mixture once it boils. Uh, by sifting it in, we'll hopefully avoid those clumps that um, the shoe dough, it's one of the things that makes it problematic is that the flour can actually clump up in the hot liquid. So we're gonna give that a minute to boil and then I'm gonna get my flour ready um, to go in my sifter next. Our mixture just started to bubble, so I'm gonna let it get to a full rolling boil, all right? And I'm making sure that I'm stirring it too just to make sure that that butter and water isn't all separated, all right? So I'm gonna let that get to a full rolling boil, and then I'm gonna be ready to go with my sifter and my flour. I wanna make sure all the butter is completely melted down first. Just a side note, I also preheated my oven to start at 375 and I lined two baking sheets with some parchment paper as well. All right, so my butter is all melted. It's at a full rolling boil. So I'm gonna place my sifter over top. I'm going to empty my flour in quickly by just tapping it on the side, okay? Leave those bits and then stir, stir, stir. Turn off your burner. And what we're gonna end up with is a dough ball. Okay, and we just wanna stir this on that burner. It's off, okay, but I'm just stirring it very vigorously till I get a dough ball and you want to do this on that burner that's still hot for about a minute to cook out the flour should be a little bit of an arm workout <laughs> all right and then i'm going to take this okay i'm going to transfer it over to my stand mixer for the next portion I have added my shoe dough mixture that does not contain eggs yet over to my stand mixer and I attached the paddle attachment and I've just kind of been running it every minute or so every 30 seconds because that helps get some of the heat out before we add the eggs we want it to cool slightly um, it's not going to be completely cool uh, but it's going you want it to definitely just get some of that heat out so while I'm waiting I'm going to crack four eggs into that liquid measuring cup from before because why do more dishes when you don't have to? And then I'm gonna add the eggs eventually here, uh, pretty quick, one at a time. And you have to make sure that each egg is completely incorporated into your mixture before you add the next egg, okay? That's probably 
the most important part about making this dough itself. So I'm gonna run it one more time, get some of that heat out. You can see when you move it around, some of that steam releases. I'm also gonna take another egg and I'm going to crack it into my measuring cup that I have my flour in. You can put it in a ramekin, but this is gonna be our egg wash in a minute. Once we get the shoe dough piped onto our baking sheet, we're gonna egg wash it a little bit so we can just take that and just we'll put a little water in it we'll set that aside all right i'm ready to start adding my eggs now you can do this by hand with a wooden spoon um, but this is just a lot easier so i'm going to start by dropping one egg in i'm going to turn it up to like a medium heat or medium heat medium speed it's going to look kind of greasy and separated at first and that's normal but it'll start to eventually come together um, and once you can tell that egg's been mixed in, you can go ahead and drop your next egg in. So it likes to separate and form those clumpy bits before it actually incorporates together. And there's a few different ways we're gonna tell if our shoe dough has enough egg in it, okay? So I'll show you that here in a minute. Okay, we got that egg mixed in. We're ready for egg number three. You can also stop um, about now, which I might do, and just scrape the sides of the bowl to make sure that it's all getting incorporated in together. So I'm just gonna do that really quick. Stop it, scrape the sides to make sure that, you know, it's all the egg is getting mixed in equally. And it's weird because it looks like it's going to be really clingy and sticky, but it's actually not because of the butter content. So I'm going to add my last egg. And then once this becomes like a smooth, kind of like a loose cookie dough, we're going to test it. So a couple things, you can take your finger and take the dough and put it together. Okay, how can I show you guys this? So I took it and smashed it. Do you see how the little top of that curls over? That's perfect. That means we have just enough egg in there. So now I'm gonna transfer it to a Ziploc bag. You guys know how to do that because of yesterday. And then I'm going to start piping onto my baking sheet. It is time to pipe out our shoe dough, all right? So I've transferred it into my Ziploc bag. I've tried to get it mostly into one corner. Just remember to fold down the outsides when you do that. And then remember when you cut a piping tip, you can always make it bigger. So I always like to start off a little bit smaller, all right? And you can always, like I said, recut it if you'd like it to be larger. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to twist off that top portion there so that none of the shoe dough shoots out of the bag, okay? And then I'm going to just keep it on the same area, press and lift up. Press, lift up. And we're gonna go back and we are going to water down the peaks so that we don't get little burnt ends on our cream puffs. You wanna, to be about that big. And you want them a little bit spread out because they will grow. I like to do about a dozen or nine to a baking sheet. Oh Lord, we got a leak. That can happen. Don't stress. Let's see if I can plug it with my finger. Oh yeah, all about being resourceful. So I'm gonna get the rest of this piped out. Also setting aside, I have an egg wash. Remember that's that extra egg that you grabbed that I cracked into the measuring cup and I'm gonna add a little water to it and whisk it. And then I also want a little ramekin or measuring cup full of water because you're gonna watch what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go over them with my fingers that I'm gonna you know, get some water on to take those, I'm leaking again, to take those tips down so we don't have a burnt end. All right, you want them to all be about the same size because 
but you guys can answer that. Uniformity in cooking is a good thing. If you need to go back and add to a few, do that. This guy's all weird. I don't know what we're gonna do with him. Maybe just see what, he, what becomes of him. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my hands really quick. I'm going to take a little water, wet my fingertips because then it won't stick to the dough and just tap down those tops. And then I'm gonna follow it with an egg wash, okay? What is the function of the egg in the shoe dough? Write that down on your recipe. And what is the function of the egg in the egg wash? Two different functions. All right, now that I've got all of my little peaks pressed down, like I said, I'll follow it with an egg wash. I'm gonna set a timer halfway through the bake time to rotate these in the oven, okay? And um, make sure that you want it to be that perfect doneness. So what we're looking for is a crisp bottom, a hollow inside, Okay, but we don't want it to the point where it's so crisp that it's gonna like crack. We still want that inside to remain soft. So we're gonna stick these in. I'm gonna do a 10 minute timer, then I'm gonna switch them and I'm gonna check them at 20, but they've known to take 30. So just depends, keep an eye on them, all right? And I'm gonna pop those in now. Uh, my cream puffs are ready to come out of the oven. They've been in a total of 26 minutes, I wanna say. So I'm checking these out right now. Some of these are pretty large. Like this one here, I think it might need more time, but a test is to tap it and see, oh, there's my weird one. That one's definitely done, okay? Is to tap it and see if, it, um, if it's hollow, okay? And so I might take off the smaller ones real quick and put them on the cooling rack and then put in these larger ones just for a few more minutes. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm removing the ones that I think are done. They puffed up so nicely. And we're gonna get these other ones back in the oven. Okay, and then I'm gonna let these ones cool. I'm gonna cook these ones off for two more minutes or so just to puff them up again. And I'm gonna let the ones that I have here on my cooling rack cool for a minute and then i'm going to get ready to fill them you want to save your parchment paper okay we can reuse them you can also use the parchment paper to set them on once you filled them so that it doesn't get super messy okay we want to give them a chance to cool so that when we do pipe them the filling just doesn't run out of it. So we're gonna let those cool. This looks like a snail, that's really cute. Okay, we're gonna let those cool for about, I don't know, three minutes. All right, our cream puffs are ready to fill. So I'm going to grab my pastry cream and I just kind of like messed it around in the bag so that it's a little bit um, like more liquidy, ready to go. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna kind of pinch the tip there so that I can get a nice clear spot so I can cut my pastry cream bag here. You, like I said about the shoe dough bag, you wanna cut it smaller because you can always cut it larger. So we're just gonna do a tiny bit, okay? And then I am going to, and it's better when you can use both people on your team, okay? One person can take your cream puff and they can make a little uh, X in the bottom, okay? You don't want it to be large um, because we want the cream to hold inside of it once we get it in there. Then we're gonna take our cream, and like I said, this is easier with a partner. So we're gonna twist that bag like we did our shoe dough. I'm gonna stick that into the cream puff, and then I'm just going to gently fill it up. And it kind of puffs back up, it's really cool. And then I'm gonna set that on my parchment paper to uh, kind of set up. And it shouldn't come out much, right? It, that's why you want to keep your parchment paper those because that little spot's still exposed. You're going to repeat that process with the rest of your cream puffs and you're going to have an awesome, delicious, homemade pastry. Enjoy.